we are we are going to be in the book of Jonah tonight. Um, it was pointed out we we've kind of looked at Jonah uh, recently, and uh, and we have, but that's okay. It's a it's a it's a fun story and a, a well written story. I think one of the two or three best written uh, narratives in the Bible uh, is in the book of Jonah. It's just a a terrific uh, story and it drags you, draws you in and and you're invested in it and you're you're kind of on the edge of your seat even though we kind of know what happens. Um, but it's it's a pretty pretty neat story. Uh, we are looking though sort of at an overview of the prophet. So let's start a with a little bit just to sort of uh, remind ourselves of kind of where we stand um, as as we uh, as we look at at Jonah. We're looking at the eighth uh, uh, century BC, the seven hundreds. Uh, Jonah around uh, kind of slightly after probably Elijah and Elisha, um, and, um, and, and um, Northern Kingdom is, is kind of where he was situated. And um, uh, so, so just to sort of give you a little bit of a sense of, of the, you know, there's Jonah right there, just to sort of give you a little sense of the kind of where he comes in the succession of the prophets and, and where, uh, you know, it, what the time frame we're talking about is, um, because that's kind of been something that's requested of us. Uh, so um, we, we know of Jonah mainly from his book. We also know of him from one other uh, instance. Uh, anybody know where where we know of Jonah from, other than his book? There's something. Well, okay, Jesus. Jesus refers to them. The, the sign of Jonah. Sign of Jonah. Jesus refers to the sign of Jonah. Uh, what is the sign of Jonah? Three days. Resurrection after three days. Resurrection after three days. As as Jonah spent three days in the belly of the whale, so Son of Man will spend three days in the earth and and then be uh, be resurrected. And so so uh, there's a parallel there. Um, I actually have been looking for Sunday at First Corinthians 15, where Paul talks about how Jesus was. Uh, uh, raised from the dead according uh, after three days according to the scriptures and when you start looking there, there are references to three days and people being saved from death after or saved from from death or potential death or hardship uh, after three days all through the old testament it, it happens over and over and that's almost certainly what paul was referring to when he uh, talked about uh, the 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 resurrection of Jesus after three days being according to the scriptures. And Jonah is one of those places, uh, three days and nights in the, in the belly of the whale, just like uh, Jonah's experience, so Jesus's. And uh, uh, just like as Jonah was rescued and, and in a way resurrected, so is, is Jesus. But that's not actually the, the, the time I was thinking of. Uh, there is another reference to Jonah in uh, in the Old Testament, and it's in 2 Kings 14, 25. Uh, so we can we can turn there just to sort of get a little sense of uh, of Jonah outside of his book. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 14, and he appears in verse 25. We'll go back a little bit to uh, verse 23 of 2 Kings 14. Uh, the writer says, in the 15th year of Amaziah, son of Joash, king of Judah, Jeroboam, son of Jehoash, king of Israel, became king in Samaria, and he reigned 41 years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord and did not turn away from any of the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit. He was the one who restored the boundaries of Israel from Lebo Hamath to the Dead Sea in accordance with the word of the Lord, the God of Israel, spoken through his servant, Jonah, son of Amittai, the prophet from Gath Pifa. So, so Jonah, uh, in, in this case, doesn't seem to have a problem giving a king good news, <laughs> right? That's, that's kind of what you see here in 2 Kings 14. Jonah has good news for, uh, for Jeroboam, uh, Jeroboam II, and, uh, and, and uh, seems to, to not have a problem with that. It's maybe in the bad news department that uh, Jonah has his struggles, and that's probably not fair. We, we don't know anything about Jonah's uh, career as a prophet other than what we have here in 2 Kings 14 and what we have in his book. But he doesn't come off well in his book, does he? Um, and so, so that's kind of what we'll be, we, we'll be looking at as we, um, 
as we uh, as we take a look at this uh, this book together. Um, so uh, back to the book of Jonah. Uh, I, I as a kid, I, I remember uh, being taught sort of a, a a thumbnail sketch of Jonah by chapter. Anybody remember this? Chapter one is Jonah runs from God away from God, right? Chapter two is Jonah runs to God. to God. Chapter three is Jonah runs with, with, God. God. with God. And chapter four is ahead of God. Jonah runs ahead of God, yeah. right? Yeah, that's what I got in my notes, man, from my Old Testament professor. What's that? I said, that's what I have in my notes from my Old Testament. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think it's a, I think it's a, a pretty common uh, uh, little thumbnail sketch, and it actually works fairly well. I mean, it, it's oversimplified, perhaps, but but it works pretty well to sort of give you a sense of the arc of Jonah's story. Uh, Jonah begins verse one of his book as a lot of prophetic books begin. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. So that's a fairly typical prophetic call, right? And a lot of the books start something like that. Uh, in the time of in the you know in the time of this king, the word of the Lord came to this prophet, and but after that, that's where things diverge uh, greatly, right? Because Jonah, instead of being faithful as as the other prophetic books. Can you think of a prophetic book in which the prophet doesn't do what God tells him to do? No. I mean, there might be something, but I, I can't remember one. Um, Jeremiah certainly resisted, right? He didn't want to sometimes, but but he, he, he said he couldn't uh, hold it in, right? It was a fire in his bones. He couldn't hold it in even when he wanted to. Jonah doesn't seem to have much trouble. <laughs> and, uh, and in fact, Jonah decides instead of going east toward Nineveh, he's going to do what? Go west. He goes uh, right away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. Now, Tarshish is maybe, uh, some people think a port in Spain. Uh, some people think Carthage, which was a Phoenician colony in Africa. Uh, and uh, some people think it just kind of means as far west as you can go. <laughs> uh, there are ships referred to in the Old Testament called ships of Tarshish, uh, which seem to be ships outfitted for long voyages all the way across the Mediterranean, which in Jonah's day, it would have felt like you were about to sail off, you know, into the, you know, sail off the edge of the earth, uh, for, for, for a bit lack of a better expression. Um, so, so in any case, Jonah decides he's going to get about as far away from Nineveh as he possibly can. And so he goes down to Joppa, he boards this ship uh, bound for Tarshish and heads out to flee from the Lord. Now, if you read Jonah today, um, I asked in your email, in the email I sent you, uh, I asked you to think about a question. Anybody remember the question I asked you to think about? What do you got wrong? What does Jonah get wrong about God? Several things. Basically. What, what does Jonah get wrong? So as we sort of read through this book a little bit, we're not going to read it verse by verse, but as we... As we skim through this book some, just think about what does Jonah get wrong about God? And we basically have a freebie here. What does he get wrong about God right off the bat? Well, that God the, uh, know where he was going and yeah. be able to find him. That, that somehow he's going to pull a fast one on God. Now, now I, I don't know that Jonah really thought he was going to like, escape God. Um I, I, I think he hoped he might get farther than he did, but but I, I don't think, I mean, it'd be pretty weak theology for a prophet, right, to think that uh, that God really wasn't going to know where he was and, and was not be able to you know, track him maybe, <laughs> to Tarshish. Maybe he thought that he would, well, okay, this guy doesn't want to yeah. find somebody else. I, I think maybe that's more like, if he goes the opposite direction, God will just say, well, I'll just get somebody else. Uh, and you kind of wonder sometimes why God didn't just get someone else, right? Mm -hmm. um, Jonah is not particularly uh, into his work at this point in his uh, in his life. So uh, 
But don't we do that? But don't we do that all the time? I mean, we can say, kind of laugh at Jonah trying to sort of run from God, but I mean, don't we kind of hold God at arm's length? Don't we kind of go on about our our business, doing the things we want to do, heading the way we want to head, sometimes without consideration as to as to what God might might want of us. Um, so Jonah does uh, leave, but uh, something happens as he as he goes in verse four. The Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. Uh, it literally says the Lord hurled a a great wind on the sea. Um, God is active in Jonah. He does a lot of things. He he he's he's there's a lot of verbs uh, in which God acts in certain ways, and and this is just one of them. God sends this great wind and this storm, and the sailors are terrified. They're all praying to their gods, throwing cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. Jonah is uh, sleeping. Uh, interestingly enough, um, I don't know if he just doesn't know or or. Uh, is so comfortable with his choice that uh, that he's, he he uh, can sleep or is just sort of checked out. But he falls into a sleep. The captain said, "How can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe He'll take notice of us so that we will not perish." Then the sailors said to one another, "Come, let us cast lots to find out who's responsible for this calamity." So they cast lots, and the lot falls on Jonah. Um, and uh, they, so they're asking him, what's going on? You're making this trouble. What do you do? Where do you come from? And he, Jonah answers, I'm a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. See, Jonah doesn't have this place-bound idea of God that we sometimes think he has. Uh, Jonah understands God made the sea and the dry land, right? So, uh, so. Jonah isn't as as uh, 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 what am I trying to say? His his theology is not such a deficit, such the deficit that we think it is. He understands the power the power of God and the nature of God. Uh, God is not a local God. God's not local. That's exactly right. He's 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 uh, he's not just the the as the pagans would have sort of conceived of it largely. Not just the God of the sea or the God of the storm or the God of the land or the God of fertility or whatever. He is sort of, he's the all-encompassing God. He is the only God. He is the one God. And uh, and so they're terrified. I don't know if they're terrified because they know the stories about God or if they believe what Jonah's just said about him being this uh, God of the land and sea and, and everywhere else. Um, but they uh, they are terrified and they uh, uh, and so they ask what should we do and Jonah says hang on I'll go pray and repent and make things right with God right throw me in the sea throw me in the sea Jonah's a Jonah's kind of a drama queen frankly jo jo Jonah lo Jonah loves the drama right and so it's either it's it's all or nothing with Jonah right it's it's I'm gonna I'm gonna. I'm not going to Nineveh. I'm going to Tarshish. And uh, I, I, well, God's caught me now. There's only one thing to do. Clearly, throw me into the sea, uh, and uh, and and you guys will be safe. Uh, the uh, the crew actually comes out comes off really well in this story because they don't even want to do that. They they keep trying to sort of resist that idea. We we you know we we sort of sometimes have this caricature of bloodthirsty pagans or whatever and and that's not that these guys they are they are uh they're trying to do trying to come up with some solution other than to, to throw this poor guy into the ocean um but uh they can't and finally they actually cry out to the lord and it's the word yahweh it's the covenant name for god that israel uh, israel used uh please do not let us die for taking this man's life um, and then they took Jonah and threw him overboard and the raging sea grew calm. And at this, the men greatly feared the Lord and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. So you get the contrast, right? 
Jonah's got a word from God and he's running. These pagans see God in action and they fear him and they sacrifice to him and they make vows to him. Uh, they, they intend to keep their word to the Lord and Jonah, on the other hand, uh, has not shown that. Um, pause. What has Jonah gotten wrong about God in this chapter? Well, for one thing, you cannot say that you believe in God. He doesn't seem to understand God's compassion. Okay. He's sending him to do a compassionate thing. Okay. Save this whole city. All right. But he doesn't care about that. And we're going to see later, he's going to get mad when they repent. Okay. And so he has no compassion for lost souls. Okay. Period. He doesn't have compassion. He doesn't but see God God's does. doesn't God see does. God's compassion. Right. Linda, does. Linda, what were you going to say? I was just saying that you can't uh, truly believe in God if you don't do what he says. Okay. All right. Yeah, he, he would probably call himself a believer in God, but he, you know, he doesn't act that way. Again, as Laura he's, pointed out, he's not the only one. He's not behaving right. like a person that uh, believes and trusts in God. He's not the only one who sometimes, uh, we sometimes... <laughs> undermine our stated belief in God by the, the choices we make and the decisions we make. Um, and Jonah certainly does that. He doesn't realize that belief uh, and obedience are related, connected, two sides of the same coin, right? That they're... they're yeah, like together. hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah, so mm -hmm. he, he, doesn't, he doesn't seem to get that. In somewhat defense... You know, he is going to Assyria and they're the they're the they're the gangbangers on the block. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, it, you know, the, the, and um I, I don't know. I mean, it's like going, it's like being called to go and talk to Hamas, go and preach to Hamas, or the Israeli military, depending upon what your view is of the situation, you know. Um so I, I'm trying to say is this that, you know, this is not just the guy down the street that you got to go talk to who's from another country or something like that, that, you know, um, uh, so I, I don't know exactly how powerful they were, uh, the Assyrians, exactly how powerful they were at this moment of history. So they were pretty uh, powerful. They, this was kind of the, the ascension of their empire at, at around this time. And the, they were pretty powerful and had a reputation for ruthlessness. I mean, you know, they're 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 you know as as most conquerors do, right? They had this because you know the stories that get told are the stories of people who have been conquered by them, or the stories that they tell of their own conquest. Right. And I mean, yeah. they had a reputation of ruthlessness. Yeah, I I know I'm I'm aware of their reputation. I just you know didn't have time to uh, didn't think about you know exactly this moment in their history. Where they, how powerful they were on the world scene, yeah, I mean, the, at that area, yeah, this was this was uh, you yeah, know post Shamanizer. This I mean this they were they were they were ramping up their uh, abilities and and actually depending on when I mean probably less than fifty years from the time Jonah prophesies, uh, Samaria is going to be uh, right uh, sacked and 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 destroyed and conquered. I loved it, so you could we can talk after so um yeah the assyrians were terrible i mean they were i mean even amongst the peoples at that time they were about the worst that could be the babylonians were much better and they weren't nice um but um you know jonah we're, i'm not sure we're giving him some credit here i mean he says i don't want you to be take the fall for what I did, so throw me into the sea. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's not an unchristian kind, I mean, I, I mean, that does show some um, willingness to accept blame that's and true. consequences, and to save others around you. Yeah. So, I mean, he's not, he's not all bad, he doesn't want to do this, but he's not going to drag other people down with him now that he realizes that he's going to be held to account for what he did. And 
I mean, that's sort of one of the first likable things that he does in in this book. When he starts to see some of the the ramifications his choice is going to have for these guys, yeah, you're right. He 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 changes course. He doesn't seem to show that same concern for the Assyrians, but uh, yeah, we'll get to that. Uh, I was, thinking... but you know, um... go ahead, Linda. Oh, okay. I was I was thinking about the Assyrians, and by God sending Jonah uh, to speak to these people. God always accomplished his purpose. And I think if Jonah had uh, gone and did as he was told, God was there with him anyway. So him being frightened, you know, just truly, um, I don't know what to call it. <laughs> but I just think that uh, God is, is always in the mix. For, for one, of one of the things I think Jonah misses about God in this chapter, the thing about being thrown overboard, God isn't, God is patient. <laughs> God isn't done right. with the Assyrians yet, and Jonah, and God's not done with Jonah yet. Yeah. And and I right. think Jonah maybe feels like, you know, he's blown it. He's blown it. It's done. Um, and and God's gonna show he's not quite done with Jonah. Yeah. Well, it, it was nice of Jonah to try to sacrifice himself to save the others. On the other hand, Jonah might have thought, see, I am going to get out of doing this. <laughs> and, and, and later on, you know, we you say drama queen. He says, right, I would have rather died. I would rather have died. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know. He, Colette, he what, what, have... Go ahead. Go, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Colette, what were you going to say? Pretty much what you guys are saying, that he thought he was going to get out. I mean, he got it wrong. That when God pegs you for the job, you're pegged. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and, and I, I, I just want to double down on Jonah's not done yet. And, and you know, we can convince ourselves, right, sometimes that that we're, we're, we're so far gone that we must not figure into God's plans anymore. And and God's gonna correct Jonah uh, on that. Now Jonah may not feel like it <laughs> the way it, it it comes out, but but I think that's something he gets wrong, uh, kind of right from the get go. Uh, God yeah. God's compassion has been mentioned, and and God's compassion for him, and and his continued faithfulness to Jonah, as we will see in chapter two. Oh, one oh, other thing ahead. about this whole chapter is is that the other fishermen or the sea people on the boat basically started to believe in God. Yeah. I mean, even if it was only for just a minute, but again, that shows God's power. And you see that in tons of stories when Jesus healed someone immediately, you know, you had another believer, this household believed, you know, so if, if Jonah didn't make this mistake, these people wouldn't know about God. That's right. That's, that's very true. And you also start to wonder, as you see these pagans making sacrifices to God, you start to wonder, maybe maybe the Assyrians aren't as far gone as we thought too, right? If if these pagans can turn to God, well, maybe maybe Jonah's wrong about the Assyrians. Or maybe it's just Jonah doesn't care. He just doesn't want to go. But uh, He says later. Oh, I yeah, I knew. Yeah, I right, right, right. I knew I knew what you would do. I, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. My take on this is that he understands all of this perfectly well and just doesn't want to do it. He goes the wrong It's like we do it all the time. We know what the right thing is. We do the wrong thing anyway because we don't want to do it. He's not frightened anywhere in the text. It's interesting because he seems to know exactly why the storm is there. He knows exactly what will stop it. <laughs> so the sailors are afraid because they have no idea what's happening. Right. You think Jonah's reaction would be the same, but it's not. I think Joe added, Jonah as a Jew is prejudiced against Gentiles. I think that's coming out here. Uh, I think I think certainly he's got something against the Assyrians, uh, as we'll see. They have, they're known for that. So verse 17 then, uh, I, I'm kind of keeping this with chapter 2 because... Um, uh, just because. But verse 17, a key verse and a key word. Now the Lord provided 
a huge fish to swallow Jonah. Now, if you think about that sentence just for a moment, the Lord, we say the Lord provided, and what do we usually think? Blessings. Oh, this is going to be so great. God has provided something for me, right? God, God's provision, God's, God's grace, God's, God's love. He's concerned about me and he's provided, uh, you know, whatever I, uh, well, what and, God provides and is, you would think, you know, Joe, well, maybe, you know, maybe a boat or something. Yeah, like, yeah, a life yeah, yeah. But, uh, Could God provide something a little less fishy, you know, <laughs> but, 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 it, but this God provides a fish, but it's still God provides. And that's important to, to note. He has appointed. Appointed. Yes. Appointed is a, is a valid translation of that word. It can be appointed, provided, uh, uh, God selected God, you know, God, it's God's, again, it's another one of these action words with God in which God provides something for Jonah. And, and you got to hang on to that provision thing just for a minute, because that, that becomes real important as we, as we go through this book. Well, chapter well, two. God, wait a second, God provided, but Jonah in his subsequent prayer, which is all about me, by yeah. the way, um, <laughs> he's not kidding himself. He's miserable. Yeah. I, I mean, so, you know, the boat might have been nice, but what God provided, um, Jonas is not kidding himself that the provision saved his life, but it was intended to do some other things, too. It, yes, um, it, yes, absolutely. And, and I think that's how God's provision works sometimes. I think sometimes God provides and what he provides what we need and he provides with love and faithfulness and grace. But sometimes what we need is a readjustment of some kind, right? Sometimes what we need is what Jonah goes through. And, and, um, and so you have this, this, uh, this, this prayer and yeah, it is about me. Uh, in fairness to Jonah, I would be praying about me in this circumstance as well. I think uh, I, I I don't think I would be. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> I don't think I'd be too outward focused. Probably. Um, Get the prayer list. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, but don't you? I I don't know if this is what Ron just said, but I find that ironic. I'm not going to obey you, but I'm going to pray to you. Yes. 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 <laughs> Yes. Jonah still has faith of some sort, right? Jonah still believes. It's I'm going this faith. way, but God be with me. It's not like he's had a faith crisis, which makes it almost worse. You know, yes. it, it, you know Elijah on in Mount Horeb that we talked about, right? I mean, that's a full-blown faith crisis, it seems like uh, Elijah's having. Um, Jonah's just like, you know, I, I cried out to you, and guess what? You saved me. Uh, you brought up my life from the pit when my life was ebbing away. I remembered you, Lord. He does sound a little proud of himself, right? <laughs> I remembered you and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you. I think it's ironic that Jonah prays about how he's going to sacrifice to God, right? Right while the pagans that he's been talking about have already done this. <laughs> they, they've already made their sacrifice to God in the, in the wake of the storm. Um, I will say salvation comes from the Lord. And that's going to be an ironic statement for Jonah to make. Salvation right. comes from the Lord. A couple of historical comments. Um, here's a story. Veteran lobster diver, Michael... Packard, uh, this guy was swallowed by a whale in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Okay, this is not, you know, at the turn of the 20th century. This is just, this is not too long ago. This The, the, the date of it is 2021. I know we, we taught, you know, there's um, around the turn of the century, there's a story about a guy who got swallowed by, a, you know, by a fish and survived. This guy too got swallowed by a fish. So this is up to date, you know, evidence documented etc cetera, etc cetera. um also i remember a testimony of a guy i think he was committing suicide he jumped off the bridge one of those bridges like maybe brooklyn bridge i don't know san francisco bridge i don't know one of those deep bridges and hit the water they he survived and they asked him about that he goes never again you know 
So just to show you that jumping off into the deep water, well, you know, you're going to be in for a rude awakening. Might might cure you of your desire to yeah. Uh, so yeah. So I, this this fit. And by the way, uh, the word is the word is best best translated to fish. Um, but Hebrews weren't marine biologists, right? <laughs> and 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 so fish can mean you know probably pretty much any sea creature. So uh, you know you don't have to you know. Uh, we, we don't have to figure all that out. It's 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 there's some sort of sea creature uh that that the 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 he that uh that God provides to swallow Jonah and in doing so keep him from drowning, keep him safe, uh, as it were, <laughs> but not in the pleasant circumstances. And and so that's what Jonah prays about. Um and verse 10, of course, the Lord commanded the fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. The fish does what God wants it to do, right? <laughs> so, yeah. verse 1 of chapter 3, then, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Uh, so God comes back to Jonah. Hey, Jonah, I think we've had this conversation before, but I've got uh, a job for you. Go to Nineveh, proclaim this message. And this time, Jonah obeyed. The word of the, of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Uh, and it talks about the the size of Nineveh. Uh, it required three days to walk through it. Uh, the text uh, the text says, which uh, I mean, it's pretty large. Um, and um, it, it it you know there, there, that can mean a few things. But it, it the point being, it's a big city. It's an enormous city. Um, it's one of the most powerful in the the uh the 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 known world um jonah begins by going a day's journey and it may be that the three days journey is just to sort of give you a little sense of progress of jonah through the city he goes a third of the way into the city and starts proclaiming this message 40 more days and nineveh will be overthrown and before he's even gotten halfway through the city proclaiming this message Verse 5, the Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the least to the greatest, put on sackcloth. When Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his... He puts on sackcloth, sets down in the dust. They, they uh, issue a proclamation. The king issues a proclamation. Uh, we need to fast. We need to... Uh, verse eight, let people and animals be covered. They, they put the sackcloth on the cows or whatever, right? They, I mean, they they were, they were you know, the cat would sit still long enough. They'd put sackcloth on him. And and the, the point being, this is a citywide repentance. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. Um Pretty miraculous, isn't it? especially if that's all Jonah said. Yeah, which yeah. With his attitude. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Jonah does not say, you know, here's what you do, right? Repent and be baptized. And Jonah does. There's no altar call for Jonah. It's it's just the fiery uh, three more days, and uh, and then it will be overthrown. And and honestly, that actually is not completely out of character with some of the prophets, right? We we have some prophets. Where there's not much more than than the the warning, right? The call that uh, that uh, that God is going to judge. Uh, At least they attribute it to. Yes. Yahweh. We don't yes. know that Jonah even does that. And yeah. Yet, right. Seem to know. Right. I think it's short and sweet. Uh, so That's so it it seems to work. Um, I think miraculous. Matt used the word miraculous. I think certainly we're supposed to see God's hand in this, right? This is not just. Uh, this is not the persuasiveness of the preacher. This is not. This is this is nothing but uh, God's hand and and maybe circumstances. You know, we don't know what the circumstances were of the city, but but there's certainly this this desire, this decision, this 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 mass repentance, uh, mm -hmm. so that we will not perish. Well, prophets or teaching may have gone before. And, and he comes to kind of culminate yep. 
that the city is going to be destroyed because you haven't heeded and so on. You know, God works with all these nations in ways that are not always recorded. That's right. Are there, well, now you just said it. I Are there other instances of a prophet being sent to somewhere other than Israel or Judah? I mean, we have some of the prophets that have messages for other countries. Many of them do. But then no record that they actually went I mean, and... Jeremiah went to Babylon and Egypt first, I think. Uh, you know, but but that was with the that was with the uh, uh, exile. exile. Yeah. Balaam, Balaam is interesting. We don't know exactly what in the world, what prophetic stream Balaam is in. It's kind of odd. We we we're not sure about Balaam at all because Balaam might have just been a prophet for hire who just sort of got a got a message from God sort of accidentally, but uh, we, we don't really know uh, exactly what Balaam's, Balaam's whole thing was. Um, yeah, you know, we were talking about what came before. Um, let's let's point out that it's not, Nineveh is not close to the no. Mediterranean. I mean, I could easily see how Jonah would be really pissed off about what's going to happen because he has to walk a long, long way. I mean, this is probably months, if not more, right, to get to this place. And um, it's, he maybe just doesn't like traveling all that much. <laughs> I, I mean, um, but, but I mean, it's not like he was sent around the corner, yeah. right? Um, there could have been a lot of hardships here um on the way i mean i'm sure god made a path but we're not certain god made it you know just a rejoicing um train um along the way um so um that th we we telescope time pretty fast there um without realizing months and months have probably gone by yeah. uh, with jonah on the road yeah um so uh the, the king and the nobles do talk, refer to God's compassion, uh, turning from his anger, and that's what God does. He relents and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. God is compassionate. God relents. Sometimes the word that is used of God is he repents of his uh, intention to do these things, not in the sense that, the, that you know, there was something wrong, uh, but, but that God changes his mind. God decides, I'm not going to do this thing. And that's what he does here in, uh, with, with Nineveh. He, he changes his mind. Uh, well, it's it's called repent. I mean, isn't the word in Hebrew turn? I mean, yeah, yeah, we, uh, yeah. we translate it in context, repent. Right. Right. But here, God changed. He turned yeah, he, a, he, away he, from what he was proposing to exactly. do. Exactly. So he, it doesn't mean necessarily all sorts of guilt and, right. you know, that kind of thing. Right. It, it, yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it means... Yeah, turn is, is is a fine translation or relent is a fine translation sometimes, but also sometimes repent. And it just means this, this change of mind and change of heart. God decides I'm not going to follow through on this intention that I had. Um, yeah, I drink. Yes, sir. Is that what Jonah don't want? I'm sorry? I think what Jonah don't want to do is he don't want to see... Uh, the Nineveh or Assyrians to repent because they are enemies of Israel. Yep. That's what uh, Jonah don't want because he found is that if uh, he, when God spoke to him, if he go direct to Syria for this kind of message, they will repent. And maybe the Israelis will say that he is going, trapping their law and getting to their enemies, I mean, repenting their enemies, I mean, this is what I'm thinking because Jonah, as he tell the sailors that uh, the sailors, I'm worshiping the Lord, the God who, I mean, created heaven and the earth, and the one who created the sea. That means Jonah know very well that where I'm going, God is there. Jonah is not running from God, but he's walking away from the assignment he assigned for. Yep. That's what he's walking away from. Uh, it's exactly right, and that's what that's what it says in chapter four, verse one, right? But to exactly. Jonah, this seemed very wrong. What's it? 
the, the, that God relented, right? That, that God relented from the, his intention to destroy Nineveh. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and to Jonah, this seemed very wrong, and he became angry, and he prayed to the Lord, isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? That is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. This is uh, the, the, the Old Testament creedal statement about God. This is this comes up nine or ten times in the Old Testament in different contexts. This idea that God is known as being gracious and compassionate and slow to anger and abounding in love. And uh, that word love there is the covenant faithfulness of God to, to keep his word and to, to do what he says. Um, now, Lord, but you, you, I think Ron or somebody already alluded to this. Now, Lord, take away my life, for it's better for me to live than to die, uh, to die than to, die than to live. But the Lord replied, is it right for you to be angry? Jo Jonah had gone out and sat down at a place east of the city, makes himself a shelter, a little lean-to kind of thing. And he's waiting, it says, to see what was going to happen. You know, this isn't going to hold. This repentance isn't going to hold, maybe he's thinking, right? Uh, this They can't keep this up. This is, you know, pretty soon, you know, pretty soon. Um, then the Lord provided a leafy plant and made it grow up over Jonah. There's that Lord provided again, right? God provided something for Jonah. Uh, this time, in this case, it's something to give him shade. And Jonah was very happy about the plant. Jonah's happy about the plant. He's ready to die because God won't, God is willing to save these people, but he's sure happy that he's got some shade to sit in. This place prior is. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm, which chewed the plant so that it withered. God provided again. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching each wind, east wind, and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die, and he said, it would be better for me to die than to live. I just think Jonah, well, let, let's, let's keep, let's keep moving. God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? And Jonah says, you're right, Lord, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be angry about something so silly. No, he doubles down, right? Jonah Jonah doubles down with God. Don't do that. I, don't double down with God, right? If, if God says, you think this is right? <laughs> the answer is no, it's not. And I need to change my, I need to change my mind. God said to Jonah, is it right? He said, it is. And I'm so angry. I wish I were dead. He seems like he has convinced himself that this is okay. But the Lord said, you've been concerned about this plant, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh? God calls Nineveh the great city in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left and also many animals. And we're left with that. We don't know what Jonah did. We don't know how Jonah changed or if he changed. But but we're in, we end with God's compassion matched up against Jonah's what? what? How would you describe Jonah here? Angry. His anger, his self, his self-absorption. Uh, he would rather sit in the shade and be comfortable and watch God destroy these people <clears throat> than, than, than celebrate God's compassion. He, he'd rather, he, he, and I, I got to say, we got to be careful, right? Because we, we got plenty of plants and plenty of shade and God's given us a lot. And we can so easily kind of bask in the comfort of God's people without really having compassion for these people that God have compa has compassion for. Yeah, so, Jonah, um, 
uh, Jonah had a hatred for these people. Yes. They were his enemies, and that's why he wanted to see them destroyed. But I guess he forgot about God's grace. And, that, and we are not, we live in a world, right, where, I mean, sometimes you hear people who in one one sentence profess the name of Jesus and in another sentence advocate for, uh, you know, hatred and violence and tyranny and, and, right. and, yeah. So, so a couple of things. First, yeah. um, Jonah hated these people. Well, maybe Jonah was right. I mean, we got to realize this is the, these are the people who are going to swarm down and carry away the Northern Kingdom. Not those cows. Uh, not the cows, but, you know, um, if God had taken care of them, then maybe history would have been different. Um, I mean, God has his own plans and the like, but, uh, you know, um, I'm sure many Jews down the road, uh, many Jews might look at this and say, well, you know, <laughs> uh, we had a shot there, um, you know. And anyway, second, I actually, because Jonah is so dramatic about this thing, I actually have a little bit of a fondness for Jonah um, just because he's yeah. so human. Yeah. Right. Don't we, I mean, all of us who've had children, it's true. haven't you ever seen a child just get to the end of their rope and they just don't care about the reason they are just the misery just totally overwhelms them. Right. And they just can't see beyond that. And I really think Jonah is at that point. He's just at the end. I mean, we just, I was, I was swallowed by a fish. I was <laughs> in the sea storm. I traveled for months to get here. And when I finally get here, you don't do it. So it was all for nothing, wasn't it, God? Because you didn't have to destroy these people to begin with, right? I mean, you could have just relented. And I think, it's one of those things you've seen a kid that the misery just overwhelms them. They can't contain it. I think that's where he is. And by the way, I think God loved Jonah. Oh, well, of course he did. He, he really did. And I think sometimes when we act like this, God just envelops us uh, because he knows what we're struggling with and, and who we are and the like. Um, God is very patient with Jonah, right? He is. I, I, and more than that, I think he loves, I, I, this would, when I saw a kid like this, what I would want to do is, what do you want to do? You just hug them, <laughs> right? Um, because you know, that's what they need at this point. And that's good um, for them. And that, I, I don't disagree with any of that. But it, it, it remains that at the end of his book, Jonah the prophet is sitting under a shade tree or sitting under where a shade tree used to be. And he is more angry about what God, the, the, the comfort that God has taken from him than what could happen to these people who he is just willing to see die. And I, I don't doubt that God still loves Jonah, still cares for Jonah, still wants to use Jonah as his messenger. But, I mean, God's response to Jonah at the end kind of says a lot, doesn't it? I, these, well, and that's what a matter. parent would say. 120,000 people matter. And, and yeah, Jonah, Jonah needs a hug, but there's 120,000 people that don't know their right from their left. And that's what a parent would say. Yeah. But I'm saying just let's, let's, let's not completely come down on Jonah because we do this kind of thing all the time. Um, and right. we just sometimes need God to come to um, our senses. And sometimes we just need to step back and, and, and this kind of thing. Um, so, yeah. I, 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 I think because that... we too, because we too, we have shortcomings. Mm -hmm. And I think um, God, he, he give us second chances also. Yep. Yep. I think Ron's example of a child is is perfect because I envision a a child playing like a board game 
and just being so mad that they didn't get their way that they just throw the game up, you know, and all the fun has ended. And that was the whole point of playing the game. And it's just interesting because I think the whole point of Jonah is to teach us, you know, what, what are we getting what are we throwing up? What game board are we destroying and, and by disobeying him? Or... In, in Jonah's case, the temper tantrum involves the massacre of a city full of people. That's that's what Jonah wants. That that's I mean, so I, I get it, and I I I'm sure I've made similar mistakes and 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 but don't don't miss that <laughs> Jonah's hatred and Jonah's prejudice and Jonah's uh, just convict you know just conviction that the Assyrians just need to die just get it over with and die and and whether the, he's whether whether that's the the uh, uh, I, I mean that's what happened God would have had to raise up somebody else I suppose to uh, to uh, punish Samaria for their their sins. Uh it's what God tells him in the beginning, yeah, right? But he, come up before me, he's gonna be overthrown. So maybe yeah. he's saying, well they deserve it. Why don't you just do it? Mm -hmm. He doesn't have well, but, yes, but it's like I, I get that point, Patrick, and I, I'm not I'm not shying away from that. But from another historical perspective, the repentance is transitory. Sure. I mean, the Assyrians go back, and then we have later prophets, um, you know, pointing out that they are going to meet their their end. So it is it's just delayed here, um, and in the meantime, the Jews end up suffering terribly because of the Assyrians. Um, I agree, though, what you're saying. Um, obviously, and, he had lost he had lost perspective, but that's what we do. Let's make um, a distinction because, too between. The Assyrian military and the Assyrian and whoever lived in Nineveh, right? <laughs> I mean, they didn't all go march on Samaria. You know, they didn't all go and 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 destroy uh, destroy the the temple. So anyway, I, I, but I think too, I, I I like Ron's example, but it, we can go a kid being so angry, and I certainly have been there. You just scream it; it still doesn't make it right. And yeah. that's what I love about God and His patience, right? Yeah. That he doesn't swat him or get mad at him, but it's very clear for him to come back with these comments at the end that this is the greater thing. This is the higher road. This is what's best. And that's how I look at it. Um, yeah, we God loves Jonah. He loves the, the people of Nineveh, but there is one that's, if you will, more right than the other. <laughs> and God shows his his ability to love both. That's what's powerful, right? And as we've seen throughout the book, he's not done with Jonah, right? Right. I mean, if he's done with Jonah, why bother? <laughs> you know, he, he's not done with Jonah. Um, but Jonah needs to get perspective again. A brief a brief comment on what Patrick said about Christians like I want I want to see these other people like dead or negative viewing them negative we look at church history and you will see that you will see what the you know what Zwingli did to the Anabaptists what the Roman Catholics did at the time of the Reformation okay there isn't like well okay you know we just disagree all right let bygones be bygones I'm like uh-uh I, and I and I'm not saying and I'm saying that's very simply said that there are other factors involved in this. But if you look at church history, you will see, you would be like really shocked about the way Christians treated each other. And you don't have to go that far back too, <laughs> or either. I, I remember a story, I, I will wind it up here, but I, I remember a story, uh, of one of one of, uh, one of of the preachers among us in Texas back at the turn of the century uh, goes into town to hold a gospel meeting and meets some guys on horses coming the other way and uh, he tells them who they are and who he is. And they say, all right, well, you know, we'll meet you at the church. We got to go lynch somebody. And then we'll be back to church for the meeting. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, frontier justice, right? Uh, so 
we don't have to go very far back and very far afield to see it, uh, see it. And obviously we talk about a lot of other things too, but we don't have the time. Um, thank you very much for your thoughts and your, uh, your contributions and your comments. And, uh, we will, uh, see you guys Sunday, if not before. Have a good week. All right. Thank you.